אז היי לכולם. So hard well. That's not really the topic you're expecting to hear about on a Python conference. We talk about software here. What does hardware has to do with that? However, uh, hardware lets you create a physical manifestation of your code. So this quote uh, by Nina Zakarenka from a few years ago really spoke to me because it captures the idea that um, hardware lets you, lets you um, combine your, uh, your Current coding, current passion for coding, and in your inner child who just wants to build cool stuff. In this talk, I would like to suggest new ways for you to use your coding abilities. So my name is Diogo Van Leib. I'm an experienced developer with a, over a, a decade of experience. And in recent years, I've been dealing with machine learning. And through that, I've discovered just how wonderful Python can be. And recently, I also learned how powerful it is to combine hardware with Python. So why should you uh, care about hardware? Uh, first, it allows you to channel your creativity in new ways. It allows you to invent uh, stuff to benefit people in your life that are not your colleagues or your end users. It allows you to create uh, personalized and sentimental gifts, um, and I'll get into more details about that later. And finally, because you're still working with Python, it makes you a better Python developer. So let's see a few projects uh, that people have built with uh, hardware similar to the one I'm about to show you. Uh, so this is an automatic cat tree dispenser. And you can see it, it, the cat presses on the pad and uh, the a little motor uh, lets the food come out. Uh, this is an automatic bike brake light, which uh, identifies when you slow down or stop and uh, uh, lights uh, uh, accordingly. Next, we have a Christmas decoration with a remote control that when you spin it, it identifies and changes the light both on the remote and on the decoration itself. And this is the actual board itself. This is Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, CPB. It is manufactured by Other Fruit Industries, which is a certified minority and women-owned business in New York. And Basically, by the end of this lecture, you will be able to grab one, it is quite affordable, and start working with it. So, CPB does not require, require you uh, any soldering or sewing, al -hama. It does not require to use C or C++. It does not require any environmental programming. Instead, you simply use the circuit Python, which is a subset of the Python you all know and love. So, uh, let's talk about what's about to happen next. So, um, we'll talk a bit about microcontrollers. CPB is a type of microcontroller, and we'll see others. And we'll deep dive into CPB and understand what, what components does it have. Uh, we'll go over circuit Python and coding and how we work with it. And finally, I'll show you a project I've been working on. So microcontrollers are um, basically mini computers uh, built from processor memory and programmable input output. And they are usually a part of a larger device and are responsible for a certain operation. Um, you can find them in many uh, devices that you know around us. It's, it could be in engines, in robots, in toys, in office machine, and many others, embedded, and, and other embedded systems that we know. And here are several more examples for other microcontrollers. And um, basically, there is, there is a microcontroller for any type of device you can think of. Okay, so we talked a bit about what are microcontrollers. Let's go back to Circuit Playground Bluefruit. Uh, here you can see uh, the device itself uh, with a coin as a side reference. And um, I also brought one with me today to show you. 
So you're free to pass it along between you. And I do want to pass it again. <laughs> so let's dig in and see what's inside. Okay, so you see here uh, the connections as I uh, I don't think I mentioned yet, um, you connect it using a micro USB to your computer, and that's the way you're programming. So at the top, you can see the, uh, the data connection, which is by micro USB cable. There are 14 connection tags that allows you to connect other devices in case you want and need them. Uh, those are connected by, uh, by little bolts or by cables. And lastly, you can uh, connect batteries to the, to the board so you can use it away from your computer after you program it. Uh, there is the processor, the Bluetooth antenna, and the storage. Uh, now, um, the board has uh, 10 NeoPixels. NeoPixels are the brand name for, um, for LEDs from Adafruit. Um, they are, um, uh, they can be set to any color of the rainbow, and of course, everything is programmable, and Adafruit uh, gives you the, 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 the required libraries to do that. There are two informational LEDs, and there's the green one, which is responsible to let you know uh, that the board is get, getting sufficient power. If there's a problem with the power, it will flicker or be turned off. And there's the red LED, which is um, uh, also uh, programmable. You can use it in order to indicate certain situations in your code, or otherwise it, it indicates some problem with the board. We won't get into them now. And we have the speaker. It's not the highest quality speaker you meet. Something rather similar to uh, old phones you might have had, uh, but it's functioning. Now, one of the great features of CPB is that it has a variety of sensors that allows you to sense and react to your surroundings. And, and it's, it's really fun. So there's the light sensor, there's the temperature sensor, there's the audio sensor, uh, which is essentially a microphone, there's the motion sen sensor, which is an accelerometer, and it has the ability uh, to sense uh, movement, but also orientation, and there's the capacitive touch, which is really great because it allows you to sense human or feline touch. And um, there are buttons in the in one switch, A B buttons, a reset button, and slide switch. So now we went over the structure of the board, and you have you seen it's real quick. And Adafruit has equipped us with libraries to use it very, very conveniently, and we'll see that in a minute. So let's talk a bit about the language. Um, we have Python, and MicroPython is a subset of Python, which is on one hand optimized to run on this hardware, and on the other hand is um, including all the required libraries in order to, to, to use that hardware. And CircuitPython is a fork from MicroPython, and it's, um, it's uh, created and maintained by other fruit industries. And of course, all of the above is uh, open source. And it's worth mentioning that uh, Circuit Python has a great community. There are, I think, hundreds or thousands of tutorials in their website, and you can find literally almost everything you can think about, and they are very good documentation and examples of the hardware and it's it's very easy and fun to to find inspiration on their website so how do we actually come um so we have the ball and as i said we connect it using the micro usb cable that's the point where it's a uh, good time to mention that there are two types of cables in the world and there are data types which are the good ones and there are uh, Charging types, which won't work for, for that purpose. 
Next, we need to look at the circuit pipe drive on our computer and find the code.py file. And lastly, we need to edit that file. And you can see here, I've edited with the recommended uh, code, uh, code editor and new editor. Or new editor, whatever you prefer. Um, so, Mo is Adafruit's recommended Python editor, so say the Python goals. And the good thing and the reason that they recommend it is that it auto-detects your board and it has the serial console which allows you to print stuff from the board built into it. So, you see it instantly. And a small note about the name, uh, it's apparently intentionally ambiguous. It be, can be called as a mu a me because it creates the, the website name to be called with me. And they joke about calling it mu uh, on the social media. And uh, apparently there are also meanings for the Chinese uh, sign for it, but this is out of the scope of this lecture. And this is the IDE. Uh, you can see a sample of code, code here. Um, at the bottom, you can see the serial console. And you can see that this code prints out uh, each time I'm pressing a button. So I press the button three times. So it printed three times. And there's a counter uh, counting how many times I've, uh, I've pressed it. Uh, this should look rather familiar to all of you. Let's have a closer look at the code. So uh, basically you see that the, the, um, the code is inside uh, an infinite loop. This is the way we work with this board. Um, think about it like uh, an animation that if it will run, run once, it will just be done in a minute and you won't understand what happens. So that's the way we work with it. But uh, at line nine, you see that uh, we do sleep for a fifth of a second uh, because uh, we want to make the button less sensitive. This is called debouncing. And let's talk a bit about the project. So uh, the project I'm about to talk about is uh, Danielle's music box. Um, one of the reasons I mentioned earlier for creating with hardware is uh, creating sentimental gifts. Um, I'm not a great greeting birthday card reminder. I don't know how to do that. And so uh, creating sentimental gifts uh, is a good way for me to uh, show appreciation and gratitude. Um, so, um, I'm about to um, demonstrate it. Let me just talk a bit about the project itself. Uh, this project was prepared as a farewell gift for my son's kindergarten teacher. Um, the purpose was to uh, imitate uh, uh, a certain ritual she used to have with the kids every morning and to make an electronic version of it. Um, so as I said, I'm about to demonstrate it. Not only because um, it's much more simple to understand with a demonstration than with an explanation, uh, but also because my friend Mary told me that all she remembers from her first day for, from her undergraduate studies is that uh, once her uh, uh, discreet math teacher brought uh, puppets to, to class and um, for a demonstration and everyone loves puppets. So. She basically used to knock on the box, sing a certain song, and then open the box. Get the <laughs> puppet out, hello, and sing a different song. So that's the basic principle of it. Thank you, Liron. And so. Uh, this is a demo of uh, the box I've made. Let me just open the video.
And next, we have um, a video of uh, her reaction when she received the box. As you will be able to see, um, she was very excited. Wow. <laughs> so I know I have some five minutes, so I'll do that quickly. Um, so the basic idea was to imitate the knocking and music and opening and then music. And um, um, so um, uh, the challenges I've encountered when I was working on it were uh, the fact that um, the knocking was uh, hard to identify. Uh, opening was rather simple because it just needed the, the light sensor, but the knocking was more complicated. I tried using the microphone, but it captured all, also other sounds. And so at the end, I chose to, to use a tap mechanism that is included in the accelerometer. And... Um, Next, you can see here the, the, um, the sensor that we used. As I mentioned, it was the uh, motion sensor and the light sensor. And here you can see a sample of code uh, from this project. This is a simplified version, but it shows how, just how powerful the, the libraries that Agafit have exposed to us that we don't need to deal with actually the, the the hardware or anything completely complicated. There are basic conditions saying well, if the box is uh, uh, knocked, tapped, and there is no light in the box, then play the tap music. And if there is uh, there is enough light, I uh, found a certain threshold using trial and error, and then play the open music. And you can see that CPB, CPB tap and CPB light, it's very, very easy to use. There is no complication, it just, that's it. So um, this allows a lot of space for your own uh, creativity, the fact that these libraries are very simple to use and with just, uh, uh, such, just such short code, you can achieve these results. And the limit is really your creativity. So uh, as you seen, I, in 20 minutes, I was able to show you around the board and also um, show you some project and some code. I, there's not sufficient time to show more than, more than one project, but I had experience with several other projects. So if you're interested, come talk to me about it. Um, I would like to thank you for coming to listen to me today. And I'm, uh, I'm really glad that I had an opportunity to pass on this knowledge. And this board is really, really awesome. I really recommend you trying. It's very easy to order. It also arrives really fast. And thank you for your time. And um, I invite you to ask questions. Um, how do you how do you decide about the time to wait in between things? In the first example, you had a pick to the second, and then your second sample of code at one second. Are you able to miss events that happen, or does the circuit Python take care of that with some kind of magic? Uh, so uh, in my projects, uh, it was uh, kind of a trial and error, to be honest, and see what what works best. Um, I think if you sleep, yeah, I've tried it. If you sleep long enough, you will miss events. It will happen, but yeah. Uh, so you need, yeah, you need to to work with it. Maybe there's I, I'm I'm not I'm, I'm unfamiliar with something more more advanced, but maybe there is something. Um, it's okay. Um, does Circuit Python work well with other boards that are not from Adafruit, or is it just Adafruit? Uh, I must say I haven't tried it. I will try also tried it. Oh, you mean the Circuit Python on other boards? Yeah, MicroPython is very open. It's an older school platforms run from. Lot of different chips. Um, I haven't, it's nothing that I tried, but you can definitely find the answer on the website. I probably mentioned it because it's very, very active. And there's another knowledge there. Basically, yeah. <laughs> no, it's just a Yes. 
So it doesn't have something built in, but there's, there are stuff you can connect. Again, I haven't tried it myself, but I saw that there are, there are components you can buy a separate component. And as I mentioned, you can connect other components. And so, yeah, you can connect other stuff to it. I tried connecting a board or even the screen is, is something you can add. You can see at the bottom there's the board itself and this, the screen just sits on it with bolts. I have a question. How did you define the difference between the tapping and just moving the box or placing it on the table? That's a built-in uh, built uh, option, the tapping. I didn't deal with it at all. Uh, it, it, and it doesn't respond to moving around. It, it's just, if you try it on the, on the board itself, you just click it and it just... Demonstrating is better. Just do this and it reacts, but it doesn't re react to anything else. Yeah. And another question um, is move. I don't know how to pronounce it. Is move the only way to communicate with this board? No, no, no. You can ch uh, choose other IDEs, but um, the in order to see the uh, console, you will need uh, the serial console, you will need to use a terminal. Um, what about auto completion and things like that inside the editor for kids? I think it does that. I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure right now, but but it's. I mean, it's less convenient than other editors that are more visual. I know that there's a something from Microsoft that is more like blocks of code. So this is this is less uh, less intuitive, but. It's rather convenient. Uh, yeah, I have another question about the um, new editor. Mm -hmm. uh, does it give you any feedback of the sensors? So can you see what the current temperature is or anything? Sure, 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 sure. I didn't have time to show it, but yeah, you can definitely print like all the time the temperature and you can see it flickering. Once you warm it a bit, you can see it changes. If you're checking the light, you can see change everything. All the all the all these sensors, you can see the reactions. If you're using the accelerometer, you can see it on graphs. It's yeah, it's very convenient to use. How do we get one? At the fruits website. You <laughs> can get also buy them in Israel. How is the price compared to other solution? Uh, I admit I didn't try other sol solutions yet. Um, this was just very friendly, and it's I think twenty something dollars dollars per board, which is kind of affordable. It's it's, and I haven't tried I haven't tried to compare, so I don't know. But it's very it's very easy to use. You know, I, I got into that uh, after a workshop uh, I, I participated in and it's, it's, it's very friendly. That's it. Thank you. Bye.